Welcome to the broadcast today. I'd like to jump in by saying to our longtime listeners who tune in day in, day out, week after week, thank you so much. It means the world that you would take time to listen to this program. To our new listeners, those that maybe have been only tuned in for a week or so, or maybe this is your very first time, Thank you so much. Bible Tract Echoes, this radio program, is a part of the radio ministry of Bible Tracts Incorporated. Bible Tracts Inc. is a ministry that's been around since 1938. Wrap your head around that if you would. That's a long time ago. And the fact that we have the opportunity to still be in operation serving the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, absolutely floors me. It's amazing the fact that we have the opportunity to send out millions of gospel tracts around the world completely free of charge. And those of you, even if you've never given a dime to Bible tracts, the fact that you are taking the time to listen today makes you a part of what we do. And I'd like to say Thank you. The Lord impressed upon me a few weeks ago the need for a more pronounced effort and emphasis on prayer. Praise God for the blessings, the financial blessings that God has given us here at BTI. And we are so thankful for each and every one of you that are such a huge part. Those that give the widows two mites and those that give even hundreds or thousands of dollars, we could not do it without you. Understand that that every dollar given represents 10, a dozen, even more tracks that we are able to print. And of course, as you uh, go up and up, 20, 40, 100 dollars means literally hundreds hundreds, thousands, and it becomes millions of tracts that we print by God's grace with money that is uh, donated to us. But can I tell you this, friend? Without the power of God, everything that we do will be for naught. We need to pray. This was impressed upon me by the Holy Spirit. I think of it as I stand here and talk to this microphone. Those of you that are just listening in via audio, of course, you are hearing me because of the tool that is in front of my mouth that is picking up the words that I'm saying and transmitting them to you. I'd like you to think of prayer in that same way. Prayer is the God-ordained and God-given tool that allows you and me to communicate with the God of all eternity. The creator God of the universe wants to hear from you and me. And yet, to my own shame, and I believe I can speak for a lot of us, we don't use that tool as we should. We don't make use of the opportunity that's been given to us by God Almighty to speak to him. How foolish would it be for me to stand where I am today, here actually in Dwight, Illinois, just a little bit away from Bloomington, Illinois, where our offices are. I'm standing right now in my sending church, the First Baptist Church of Dwight here, and uh, talking to you and recording this broadcast. How foolish would it be for me to stand here in this auditorium and attempt to uh, record this program for it to be distributed at a later date when you are actually listening to it right now and do that with the goal of and, and the use of no microphone. What if I were to try to talk to you right now wherever you may be, sitting in your home, in your vehicle, maybe at work, wherever you happen to have the opportunity to listen to this program How foolish would it be for me to just try to yell at the top of my lungs from here in Dwight, Illinois, and you be able to hear me from Arizona or Wisconsin or across the world? You fill in the blank with where you are at right now. It would never work, would it? And yet so often we try to do everything in our own power, in our own earthly ability and meager at that, and we don't use prayer. As I mentioned, God laid on my heart the need for especially personally, but then also for Bible Tracks, Inc., the need for an increased emphasis on prayer. And the Lord led me to this concept of a prayer band, a 24-7 link of prayer that with the goal being to fill up the entire month of May 2020 with prayer. And God's people responded uh, in ways I could not even imagine. I did not know how many people would sign up for this. To date, we've had 350 people that have banded together with us to pray for God's power, God's grace, God's wisdom for us as we minister on behalf of you 
here at BTI. We are so thankful for each of you that have prayed. We would love to hear from you. If you would like to be a part of our prayer band, if you would like to pray along with us, understand that my goal, my aim, my prayer is not that this ends with the month of May. And if you listen to this at a later date, we still ask you to pray for us. Of course, we are maybe halfway through this month or so, but can I tell you, friend, we still need your prayers. If you'd like to be a part, you say, I don't know how to sign up. I don't know how to be a part of this. Well, friend, you could just pray without even letting us know, and that would still mean the world to us, even though we would not understand the results of that prayer or the fact that someone was praying for us until we get to heaven. But if you'd like to let us know that you're praying for us, you can contact us at hello at BibleTracksInc.org. That email address is H-E-L-L-O at BibleTracksInc.org. Org. Again, one more time, you can contact us to let us know at hello at BibleTracksInc.org. We would love to hear from you. We would love for you to band together with us for the purpose of distributing the gospel completely free of charge. Now, what sort of gospel tracks do we distribute free of charge? I have one in my hand right now. It's called Thank You for Your Service. Now, those of you that don't know me well, and I've been here uh, behind the helm of, of this radio broadcast for n not that long as of now. And so most of you probably don't uh, know me that well as of yet. But I will tell you this, just a little bit of opening the door on, on who Micah McCurry is. Micah, myself, the host of this radio program, likes to eat. I love a lot of food. I eat too much food, probably, if I'm being honest. But in part of that... I enjoy going out to eat. Now, with world circumstances and things of late, I've not had the opportunity for that. We've eaten a lot. My wife is an excellent cook, and she bakes like crazy. She recently acquired the ability to make some absolutely heavenly scones, and they were just absolutely amazing. You think of a scone as this kind of dry, triangular-shaped thing that it's supposed to dip in your coffee or something. Now, I don't really drink coffee, but I picked up one of these scones, kind of a little wary of it, not quite sure. Picked it up, and... And it was excellent, just by itself, a strawberry scone with some white chocolate drizzle on it. And if I'm making you hungry, I apologize. It was phenomenal. But can I say this? When all this clears up and we're actually able to go back to a restaurant and sit down and go to a Mexican restaurant and get some salsa and some chips and, and eat until you feel like you're about to burst, you know what I'm going to do at the conclusion of that meal after I get some excellent service, I am going to leave a tip for the waiter or waitress. And along with that, I would recommend that you consider going to our website, BibleTracksInc.org, and ordering, completely free of charge, some of this track that I have in my hand called Thank You for Your Service. It's specifically designed with the intention of being left for you fill in the blank. Maybe it's someone that renders you a service at the doctor's office. Maybe it's a receptionist. Maybe it is your waiter. Maybe it's the concierge at a hotel. You fill in the blank. Regardless of who you're going to leave this tract for, it does an excellent job explaining the greatest service that was ever rendered unto man. That being... Jesus Christ dying for you and for me. This is an excellent tool about your daily life to use. Even when you can't go to a restaurant, you can still leave it in, mul in a multitude of places. Now, let's turn to our Bible study. We concluded Galatians chapter 2 last week. We're jumping into Galatians chapter 3. I don't know how long uh, we have to get through this today. Maybe we'll get through the first verse of Galatians chapter 3. We'll talk a little bit more about prayer, a little little bit about the prison tomorrow, very specifically beyond the track and Tracked in Truth Tuesday. We'll talk about the ministry that we have to over 30 different inmates just this year. We're very excited about it. But if you would, turn your Bible to the book of Galatians. Just have a few moments left in the broadcast today. I'd like to jump in here. Galatians chapter number 3, verse number 1. I'm going to grab my Bible so that I can join you. Galatians 3. And verse number one says this, O oh, foolish Galatians. Can you believe that Paul would begin this third chapter of the book, the epistle to the churches of Galatia, by saying, O oh, foolish Galatians? That seems a little strong. 
That seems a little abrasive. That's a lot of friction to be bringing here in Galatians chapter 3. Here's what he says. O foolish Galatians, who hath bewitched you that you should not obey the truth before whose eyes Jesus Christ Jesus Christ hath been evidently set forth, crucified among you. Here's the thought today. If the shoe fits, if the shoe fits, what are you supposed to do then? You're supposed to wear it. At times, we might get um, pointed out, we might be accused, we might be uh, named, something that we're not so fond of. But here's the problem at times, friend, for me and for you, sometimes the shoe fits. This idea of being foolish, I don't like being called a fool. And I would guess that the Galatians, upon first glance, the first time they read through this passage, and uh, they wondered, I'm sure, what is Paul saying here? Why would he call us foolish? Well, the word there has the connotations, has the meaning of almost the word senseless. It's not necessarily calling these folks will, willingly uh, ignorant to a degree, like you normally use a, a, the word foolish for, but it's almost referring to them as senseless. If you look up uh, Luke 24 and 25 when Jesus, Jesus was on the Emmaus Road and talking to the men who could not understand who he was, that word that, that he used there kind of means and kind of points to this idea of being senseless. Here's the thought for you. When it says here, who hath bewitched you, I've got to ask you, friend, who are you listening to that's dragging you away and distracting you from the truth of the Bible? How unfortunate it is that you and I, if you're listening to this right now, I have to believe that you understand the English language. We have the Bible, God's word given to us, and yet so often we choose to ignore it. Just as foolish as me attempting to talk to you today via the over the vast number of miles between you and me, just as foolish as it would be for me to try to talk to you right now without the use of this microphone that transmits my uh, speech to you would be to ignore the God of the Bible and allow others to bewitch you. Friend, if that's the case that you are in right now, if you know truthfully deep down inside that you have been bewitched by others and have been drawn astray, then friend, if the shoe fits and being called senseless or foolish, if that fits, then you might have to wear it. Let's come back tomorrow. We're going to look at Galatians chapter 3 and verse number 1 and continue on to verse number 2 and beyond that and learn a little bit about how we can avoid being foolish like the Galatians. God bless. Have a great day for his glory.